Welcome back to the Oregon Makers channel and today we're going to build the chair. Um, here's prepping the stock which I showed you in the previous videos. So planning, cutting down to size, all that stuff. So we're going to do a lot of pattern work here. So whenever there's a straight line I'm going to use my track saw. And then the bandsaw for all the curves, and there are a fair amount of curves in this. The arms and uh, the tops of the back and everything are all cut on the bandsaw. And I'll just show you kind of cutting the arms here. Um, my awesome bandsaw skills here. And then this is the end that gets rounded over, and then I kind of cut out the body kind of gives you room for you to sit in a chair. So one of these pieces is at an angle, the back, and so I've just ex put a piece of plywood on the sander to kind of extend that angle up to get right up to the drum just to support it. And then smoothing out my bandsaw on the other parts. So now I'm kind of rounding over the front legs. I'm putting it on edge because I'm also rounding over that corner. Um, so everything just kind of has the same profile. Wherever you touch the chair, if you're going to move it or sit in it or whatever, it's rounded over. Where another piece of wood is going to butt up against it, I don't round it over because I like that clean, sharp uh, union. So here we're going to put together uh, the base and I'm kind of laying out where I want all my screw holes to go and then I like to drill uh, start the drilling on the drill press this one's going to be a through hole to the leg and then uh, get all my countersinks done too just using the drill press just make sure you get a nice straight hole and then they're all even because I use a stop on the drill press This is the lower back. And then while I have everything set up, I'm just kind of batch drilling all the seat slots. So I'm kind of getting the screws ready so that I can just, once I have it lined up, just plop it in there. I have a mark on the uh, legs from the template of where that uh, back stretcher goes, and that's kind of what I'm keep looking down on to see if that I'm on my mark. Make sure I'm square. And drive those two screws home. Kind of making sure the front is still looks good. Everything's in line. And then using construction adhesive like I did on the other elements of this set no real good way to hold this so I kind of have it pinned between my knees and the table there and um, pre-drilling this one I, I'm drilling into the legs I've already done the countersink part but drilling into the uh, legs just because it's I'm using a really long screw here <clears throat> and then some construction adhesive and then the longer screws And now it's time for the legs. So I pre-drilled the, um, the holes that the carriage bolts are going to go into. And I, on my template, I had a little line where I want the legs to line up. So I just marked that on the legs. And make sure that the legs are square. And when I cut the angles on the, uh, the long leg stretchers that go to the back, um, the front angle, kind of where my right thumb is, and what's back there on the table, they make a perfect 90 degrees. So, got my holes drilled, more construction adhesive. This joint here is the most stressed joint in the chair, so that's why I'm using the carriage bolts. Um, whenever you get in and out of the chair, you're going to be you know, pulling on the arms and, and uh, your butt's going to be right 
there when you first sit down on it. So I want this joint to be super strong. And getting the other side in. And I'm using all stainless steel hardware. Um, well, the washers are bronze, I believe. Uh, I couldn't find stainless steel, so that's what I got. So I got the base set up. Now I'm going to set up for the arms, and I've cut these little sticks in the back the same height as the legs. And then this is just um, half inch plywood that I'm glue or clamping on horizontal. And that's the offset uh, of the arms to the front legs. And so I can just line up the arms right on that edge of that plywood there. Okay. Now I'm kind of getting ready to put the little corbels in or uh, the arm supports, centering them on the leg. And pre-drilling. It always makes me nervous because um, I'm drilling into such a little fragile piece. And then the short, the there's a shorter screw on the bottom screw because I don't have that as much wood there. And then getting the other side all lined up, make sure it's square. And getting the screws in and putting this back together. So because the arms are kind of the most important part here of the chair, um, they are suspended by the backrest. So they kind of, the arms kind of float. Where like store-bought Adirondack chairs have a support at the back. Um, which I don't like that. It looks really clunky. It's one of the things I love about this chair is how that the arms just kind of float. So I've got carriage bolt connections in the back there. So I'm drilling that. And this is the upper back support that I have pre-drilled. And I'm um, countersinking some holes with the Forstner bit. I'm just going to kind of trim it up a little bit because I want to match this to the shape of the arms. I kind of set it up there and just roughing it out. Get it close. And then bolt this together. And then I'll sand uh, to match the contours. I want this piece to be a little lighter. Um, it's so bulky using this 2 by material. So after I get everything rounded out, I'll do some steps to uh, lighten it up a little bit. So I didn't like how it was kind of pointy there, so I'm just kind of taking that point off. Smoothing it out. And there you can see how I countersunk for the, so it to kind of hide the hardware. And I'm just giving this a thick chamfer. And back on it goes. So now I'm kind of laying out where my screw holes are going to be for the supports and the front legs. Lining everything back up again. And then praying that I hit my legs. confident on the second one. 
I kind of do overkill when I'm doing my layouts. Alright, and now we're going to plug some holes, which is 50% of this project. So my countersink bit and is um, keyed with a plug cutter I have. So it's the same dimension. So I know if I countersink in and use the plug cutter, everything will fit. And flush trim saw. And I realized now that I'm sand when I'm sanding this that I forgot to round over the top. So I took the back off and uh, I'm rounding this over. And because I can't reach round, I'll just walk around my table. That's what I like about having this outfeed table. I can walk around, even though that back side's a little tight. I can fit my skinny little butt in there. And reattach the back. You can see the construction adhesive oozing out of there. Alright, now it's for the back slot. So the first one is real simple, it just is centered in there. Just kind of clamp it in there and screw it in. Now here's I'm getting my template because I have a mark on my template where the outer slats line up. So I'm going to line, line that up and they just line up with the bottom of that, the bottom brace there. And then they lean over to uh, just kind of touch the arm. And then the middle ones are just basically centered. And I cut through there because um, you'll see. You see my back while I'm screwing this in there, and it's not all that exciting. But two screws is all it takes. Uh, that with this thicker material, um, there's a lot of room for the screw to bite onto. So this one is critical that you uh, plug the holes before you proceed, because the seat slats are going to cover those bottom holes that I'm working on now. And you're not going to have a chance to plug them if you don't do it now. And that's kind of taught me, I've built these chairs several times, and that's kind of taught me to just plug it as you go. Just kind of sand them smooth. And now it's time for all the back slots, or the seat slots. So the tops are all rounded over, and just the front one, I also rounded over the, the front edge. And just spacing them out, a little construction adhesive. That, the one that touches the back is the cutoff from the back support. Um, you just kind of, and then that's perfectly with that arc. And the rest are just space, and then the next to last one I just eyeball in. Once I just put the screws in. And time for more plugs. Yeah, that one didn't fit very well, so I sanded it down and got it in there. And then slicing the plugs off. So yeah, these just hit the table on the floor. I always know when uh, I'm pretty good about sweeping up at the end of the day, but I'll step on one. Not quite turn your ankle, but close. So because we're the Oregon makers and they make Oregon quarters, I uh, inlay one in every project I do. So. I'm just kind of lining up, make sure it's straight with the ground there using the back leg. Just five minute epoxy using the pencil so I don't get my thumb on it. Fidgeting with it way too much, probably. And then just kind of sand down the plugs from the seat. hand 
standing action. And then I'm going to sand off the epoxy that overspilled and buff up the uh, quarter a little bit. A little honing compound. And that's how we made the Adirondack chair. Here's the whole trio. Um, you can click on the links here in the end card to see the footstool and the table. Thanks for watching.